Now, last week, I talked about using keywords. And if you may remember, I showed last week that keywords, this panel here, make it easy for us to search something out by a memorable term. So for example, last week, I said, what if we add the keyword sunset so that when we type that in in the search box, what I call the Google box, we'll find these photos. Now, why is it working? Well, it's working because this photo has that keyword sunset, so it's a map. But last week I said, I don't usually bother putting the names of places into the keywords. And the reason I don't bother is because of Lightroom's incredible map module. And what the map module does is it lets us put our photos onto a global map so that they are searchable and geo-referenced, to use a big fancy word. What I mean to say here is, let me hop to this group right here. In this group, everywhere that you see one of these little orange flags, that means that one of these photos has been pinned on the map. So for example, if I click here, it will highlight the four photos from this region. Now, if I right click, I have this option to zoom in. And when I zoom in, you'll see that although it showed four, three of these photos are from Nashville and one is from Atlanta. Well, let's go to say that Atlanta photo for now. If I click on that photo, you'll see down here how it's now highlighted on the film strip at the bottom. The trick that most people miss is that the next move, if you wanted to work on this photo, is a right click. We right click and go, go to folder in library. That takes us back to the library module, opens up that folder, and there's the photo say that we wanted to work on, or we wanted to export, do something with. Well, let me hop back into my little demo collection. Let me hop back into the map, like so, just to show this again. Here are the three from Nashville. Now in this case, if I zoom in again, we'll see that they're all basically shot in the same area. They're all shot more or less downtown. But if I keep zooming in and keep zooming in and keep zooming in, what we'll soon see is that they're not all shot in exactly the same place. Now, this level of specificity, what was shot here by the Cumberland River and what was shot over here from Vanderbilt University, different view of the city, most of the time, this is overkill. Unless you live in Nashville, there would be little reason why you need to know that one was shot exactly here and one was shot exactly there and one was shot exactly there. That generally speaking, you don't need to zoom in this far to get the kind of results you're looking for. Now, I'm going to zoom the map way back out by taking this slider right here and dragging it way out so we can see the whole world. This is what makes the map module so cool. If I'm looking for photos from Churchill, Manitoba, like my Northern Lights trips, there they are. If I'm looking for photos from a trip to Portugal, there. If I'm looking for photos of the Matterhorn, there. Beijing, here. There's Beijing sunrise. But remembering that this is Beijing, or this is the Matterhorn, or that's Churchill, that might not stick in your memory. So what I want to show is that right here, we have a search bar. If I type in, for example, Switzerland, the map will fly to Switzerland. I'll get a much closer view. And now I'll see that there's my little photo over Zermatt. If I go to the map and I type in, say, Beijing, the map will fly to China, a much closer view. And there's my photo. That using this search box for locations makes it easy to find where your photos were located. Now, I know I haven't explained how to put them on the map yet. I promise I will. But I want to show you that this same search ability, search map, we have something very similar back here in the library module. Just to show it, let me go to all my photos. Let me shuffle the deck so that we're not looking at the same thing every time. If I go to the text search box and I go in here, only instead of typing in the keyword sunset that I used last time, let's say I type in something like Switzerland, right? Now I'm saying Lightroom, out of all of my photos, out of all 450, what matches? Well, this matches because the box is set to search any field of metadata. And one of the fields of metadata 
that have been added to my photo is this location, this country line that says Switzerland. Same. If I type in, say, Churchill for my Northern Lights program, these photos pop up because in the city box, they have the word Churchill. It's that same match, match idea again and again. Now, this may sound like a lot of typing, and that's why I wanted to show you what's so cool here. The reason I don't usually put the location, country, city, state, into the keywords is that Lightroom can do it for you. Check this out. I'm going to go to a collection of photos that I have here that have not been placed on the map. And let's go to this one, for example, first. Obviously, this is not the real Eiffel Tower. This is Las Vegas. So if I hop to the map and I go to Las Vegas, Nevada, I will fly the map where I want it to go. You may want some more info, but there it is. If I want to go one further, let's see. If I go Paris, Las Vegas, oh, Paris, Las Vegas, it will fly it in. There is the, um, the casino. Now, I think I've gotten a little overkill for my purposes, right? So I'm going to back it out just a little because I'm not exactly interested in putting things to the exact degree, but close enough. I take this photo. All I do is take the photo from the film strip. I drag it and I place it right here on the map. And when I let go, Lightroom will write the GPS coordinates in for me. Now, when it writes the GPS coordinates in, you can see them right here. It then goes, if you've enabled it and you have to enable it, it goes and looks up those coordinates at Google. And from those coordinates, it gets this. It gets a suggested country, state, and city. They are in light gray because Lightroom isn't absolutely certain that these are indeed the right location. But its suggestion is pretty spot on. Pretty spot on. If I zoom the map way out now, see now I have this photo right here. That would take us to this one. Again, if I wanted to see it and work on it in its folder, a right click, go to folder and library, and there it is for us to work on. How about this, the Grand Canyon, right? So I'll hop to the map, and this one, I could fly to Grand Canyon National Park. This will send the map to that place. Now on this one, I could just drop it straight on Grand Canyon. And for most people, that would be more than adequate. That would be fine. But I actually know which side canyon this is within Grand Canyon. So if I want even more specificity, I could fly the map in even closer. And let me zoom it in even closer so you can see what I mean. This one was shot at the mouth of what they call Tuck Up Canyon. And this is where the Google map is so amazing. See Tuck Up Canyon? So I take my photo. I drag. I drop. It's like pin the tail on the donkey, if you remember the little kids game. I drop it there. Again, it writes US, United States, Arizona. But that's all that it can do for its suggested, suggested from Google. So what I want to do is say, yes, indeed, these are the right coordinates. And because Tuck Up Canyon was something I remember, I'm going to tell it by clicking on these words, yes, this is the United States. And once I've said yes, it's no longer a suggested. It becomes a confirm. I'll say country. United States, state province, Arizona, city. Now I'm going to co-opt the city box and say Grand Canyon National Park. It's not technically a city, but why not? Now sublocation, I'm going to go Tuck Up Canyon, just like that. The reason I'm doing this is again, it becomes searchable. Let me zoom the map way back out. Now I could click here to see two photos from a similar region, obviously that right click zoom in trick would show me that Las Vegas is here, Grand Canyon is there, but I could also now years from now search the map by typing in something like Tuck Up Canyon. And boom, here's my photo or photos plural from that location. Again, I can do that in the map module or I could do that out here in the library with all of my photos. So let me just shuffle the deck, right? If I want to find a photo and I say, oh yeah, where's my uh, 
Where's my photo from Grand? Where are my photos from Grand Canyon? Soon, I haven't even finished typing the word and this one's popped up. Or to be more specific, Tuck Up Canyon. Boom, photo is right there. Again, the match is the match to the sublocation this time. Well, here, back to my examples. So this photo, let me show you this one. It has been put on the map. Ooh, maybe I did that a little too quick. This little symbol, right? This is the little trail sign, meaning it has GPS coordinates. It's been pinned. Think of it like the little pin on the map. So if I click on this one, it will take me to the map module and show me that this is the Pemaquid Point Lighthouse. I teach a workshop right over here in Booth Bay Harbor. This is one of the places we go. Beautiful. But if I slide over to the next photo, what you'll see is that this one does not have the same coordinates. They're the same photo. Maybe it makes more sense if I display this this way, right? This photo, color, Pemaquid Point photo, black and white photo. But this one, I have added the GPS and the location information. This one, I haven't. Now, they were shot on different days, so I want to find both of them quickly and easily, not just one of them. Well, how to do this? An easy way to do this, either in the library module or the map module, would be to take both photos, select them both, make sure the one with the GPS coordinates, this one, is highlighted, that this is the one, the one with the GPS flag, the little badge, is the one that's highlighted, then come down here to sync metadata, meaning to copy the metadata settings from one to the other. So I'll go sync metadata. Now when this box pops up, I'm gonna go check none for now. Now you may need to expand this box because this can be a big long one. What I wanna synchronize is the GPS coordinates. If there was an altitude, maybe I would synchronize the altitude. And if I have confirmed the sublocation, city, state, country, etc., I might as well synchronize those two. Only the boxes with check marks will be synchronized. Everything else will be left alone. So you don't have to worry about, say, overwriting keywords or something else you've put in. So I hit synchronize. And now you'll see that this one has its GPS coordinates badge. If I click on it, to the map we go, and now it shows that there are two photos from this location there. Boom, one, two, awesome.